You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Michael Shoham, the CEO and co founder of Radix. They are a device management company um, with some fantastic offerings and a very interesting story. So, we dive into, as you might guess, device management a good bit in this episode. And the main focus for us is really to talk about how this is an industry standard now and not anymore a a really a nice to have type thing. It's something you really need to be thinking about, really need to understand and how to manage your devices when you're deploying an IoT solution. Um, But before we get into that, if any of you out there are looking to enter the fast growing and profitable IoT market, but don't know where to start, Check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Michael, to the IoT for All show. Thanks for being here this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you. Um, I want to start off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself, maybe talk a little bit about your background experience, uh, give a little context to our audience on who they're listening to. Um, so my name is Michael Shaw. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Radix. So Radix has been around for um, quite a while, and uh, the current Radix is, uh, um, is a spin-out that uh, was uh, spinned out from the original Radix company uh, around okay. 2015. Um, okay. We've been focusing on device management solutions, mainly around Android for the past, uh, well, more than a decade. Um, okay. And for the recent years, we've been focusing mainly on single purpose devices and Android TV solutions, uh, remote oh, no. management of these uh, devices. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, tell me a little bit more about the, the company's background and kind of the story as being one of the co-founders, it's always interesting to kind of hear how the company kind of came to be and um, the opportunity you kind of saw in the market to, to, to found the company. Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, we started off um, many years ago. Um, I was part of a company that started up many years ago as a service company. We, we uh, delivered solutions uh, for mainly for the education, um, okay. vertical the education systems. Um, and a few years back, I think um, about 15 years ago, we... Um, uh, took a decision to focus mainly on uh, developing solutions that made our life easier. Um, and mm. since we focused on Android solutions, uh, Android devices, tablets that just came into the um, EDU sector, the education sector, um, sure. we started developing solutions for remote management, remote administration, um, remote assistance, tools like uh, like that that will help your typical IT uh, teams to handle the mass number or the, the, the huge number of devices that came in. Um, and around 2015, we decided to spin out that portion of the company and focus only on that. Um, and ever since we've been developing uh, solutions that we found are missing in the market, uh, and that is device management for single purpose mm-hmm. devices mainly. And I'll okay. explain maybe later what that means. Um, yep and mainly for Android, although we support all type of operating systems. Okay, yeah, let's expand on that a little bit then to talk more about kind of the offerings and the role you all play in the space as it relates to asset management and the single kind of devices that you just mentioned. Talk a little bit about what that means and just the overall kind of focus you all have. Yeah, so when you're um, talking about device management, it's a huge Mm -hmm. topic. I mean, their device management is found everywhere. Uh, anything from uh, managing a fleet of um, IoT static, uh, res- uh, you know, sensors, all the way right. to um, corporate uh, laptops and 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 you know phones and tablets. Uh, it's right. it's it's a huge segment, um, and we are somewhere in between. So we okay. um, focus on managing solutions that are um, very advanced. They are computing devices mainly with uh, screens and and um, interaction with a user. However, they're not, uh, they're not your typical corporate device and they're used for a specific mission. So if, you're, uh, okay. if, if we're going to like, uh, put that in a, um, and encapsulate that into what we're focusing on, that is right. um, a point of sales, mobile point of sales, uh, um, digital okay. signage devices, um, Android TV set of boxes, Android TV screens, anything that has an Android operating system um, that is embedded with a device that has a screen, um, mm-hmm. interaction with a user, 
and it's usually uh, in a form of a fleet of many devices. That's where that's where uh, we focus on. So, so talk to me a little bit about some use cases where Android devices are being used, kind of more in a fleet sense, as opposed to you know obviously the everyday consumers thinking about their phone or or other yeah. Android based products. Where is where does asset management kind of fit in? Um, I, I assume it helps more kind of on the telco side, on the, the enterprise right. side of the, the equation. This us educate our audience a little bit about how, when we're thinking about Android and these devices, how your solution kind of provides value to them in being able to manage those or and, and, and you know where those assets are. Yeah. So typically when you think about an Android device, you think about your phone. However, right. Android is the driver of almost any device today that uh, you, you see around. So if you're um, going into a um, um, supermarket, a grocery shop, you see uh, digital signage devices on, to, on, on, their, uh, you know, on the wall, uh, right. they are most probably driven by an Android device. If you're uh, okay. looking at your typical TV set at home, uh, it's running Android. Um, if you're looking at a mobile point of sale device, something that looks like this, uh, mm. then it runs Android. Yep. Um, but it doesn't run Android in a way that you do that with your phone. Um, right. It has to be controlled and maintained and has to be locked down to its mission. So um, if you're looking at your phone, you're allowed to install whatever you want. You like to play with the configurations, uh, right. reset it do whatever you want. But if it's a, if it's a mission oriented device and it's okay. scattered around in thousands and sometimes in millions, like in telco cases, uh, mm -hmm. you need uh, the upper hand. You need to have someone over uh, overlooking and managing that um, in, in a central, in a central point of view, uh, anything from over the air firmware updates all the way to right. remote assistance, remote control. And this is where we are with our, um, focus on devices that have a, a screen, an interaction with the user. So okay. um, this is a specialty. It's something that you need to, to specialize in. It's not your typical um, enterprise MDM type of solutions, but more mm. uh, uh, a solution that will um, that will tailor or or um, lock down your environment to that specific right. uh, specific mission. And if we um, talk a little bit about the telcos and their uh, and the Android TV initiative that they have right now, um, then if you take a, t a typical uh, TV operator today, uh, someone that delivers uh, uh, TV experience to their customers, in the past mm -hmm. it used to be either cable or satellite, and they had right. a set of boxes uh, that were very very static. That means that right. nothing right. changed there. It's a very static device. The maximum that a support engineer will have to do is either do a uh, factory reset or reset or maybe a firmware update. But today, this is a computing device. It's a real. Okay. It's a device that, by definition, allows users at home to install new applications, uh, change things, and when there is an issue, um, and and the telco is not prepared for that, and there's a, a support call coming in. You start by spending like half of the of the time explaining what you see right now on the screen, and right. if in the past uh, they just need to tell them click two times down and one times to the right, and that will fix the issue. Uh, mm -hmm. The device doesn't look the same from household one to household two, and they need sure. a solution to uh, manage it uh, centrally. Of course, get alerts. Um, uh, you know, usage patterns, uh, abuse um, alerts, yeah. someone is, right. uh, is using it the wrong way and so on. Yeah. Right. That's fantastic. Um, talk. So I wanted to, to pull out a little high level here for a second. And we've covered device management in, in a different, in many different ways, uh, kind of throughout the history of this podcast. But from your perspective, what, how do you view the overall importance of device management you know it's it's becoming more of an industry standard these days it's not just a you know nice to have kind of feature and you've kind of hit on a number of areas already of of why this is important but just like if you pull it out a little bit more high level how would you kind of describe to somebody who's wanting to understand the value of device management on its importance and the role it plays yeah it's a it's a great question so um if you're if you look, it really depends on who is the stakeholder here. Um, if we're talking about a device manufacturer, sometimes it's a, it's a mandatory for a, a device manufacturer to have their solutions 
um, remote enabled, meaning that uh, right. um, right. they be able to manage them out of the box. And for an enterprise device, it goes without saying, you can't um, have an, an enterprise device come into your uh, network without being managed in a way. So um, Apple is, uh, is, is taking care of that. Google is taking care of that with uh, EMM solution. Uh, um, Windows, of course, is being managed um, for years. But when you're talking about a unique device, a device that was built um, such as uh, at remote health or telehealth, these are Android driven devices that are not part of the enterprise network. They're not managed with any enterprise tool, uh, okay. but it has to have a management portion. And there are no available standards for that. And uh, this sure. is where we come in. Uh, you, you can't have a fleet of devices running around without uh, someone taking care of it. And the alternatives for uh, a manufacturer is to develop something on, a, on, on their own. Um, so if you're, uh, uh, if you're, you're producing a, a remote health or a telehealth device, uh, right. which is in every household, um, you're probably um, looking at something, um, if you're developing, developing it yourself, looking at firmware updates or sure. application management or something like that. But Right. Uh, you cannot cover if if your specialty is hardware. You cannot cover uh, the uh, vast uh, infrastructure uh, that has to do with uh, secured management uh, platform. And this is why it's important to have management on one side, but it's right. it's, it's important to have the right tool on the other hand. So if you're not developing something on your own, which will never be as good as a, um, as a state of, of the art solution that was built bottom up for that. Um, mm -hmm. It's one thing, or if you're taking uh, an enterprise solution, try to, you know, force it on that type of market, uh, then, then you're, you're probably missing the point. And, uh, and this is why it's very important to have remote management, but it's important to have the right remote management for the task, for the mission, for the job. Right. Uh, you can't just uh, adopt anything and, and, you know, pray to God that it will work and, and yeah. keep you covered when, when your devices start to fail or they need the immediate update or immediate support for your customers. In which stage of the kind of conversation do you all usually come into with these device manufacturers and companies? Are you coming in once in the very early stages of the development or is this something you can kind of layer on after the fact um, and maybe work with legacy type uh, hardware that that needs something installed to help them better manage their fleet of devices. So we support um, any stage, uh, okay. meaning that we can come in and uh, um, you know with, with a very very fast time to market. That means that uh, in a week we can manage a new a new device uh, mm -hmm. and roll out uh, a solution. But of okay. course, it's best if we come in at the uh, planning stage and and interact with all the uh, unique APIs. Uh, take that screen behind me uh, this is a typical android uh, television set with a lot of capabilities but this one um, uh, our solution is part of the firmware and we included and it was built uh, from day one to support okay. that kind of uh, screen and and we included um, solutions like uh, source selection or volume control or even a uh, unique menu selection that is not typical part of, of your standard Android device, but it was added with an API. And it's best if it comes from, from you know, the, the, the beginning of, or the planning stage, but we can really right. come in at almost any stage of, of the, um, you know, life, life cycle of the device. Okay, and it seems like there's value kind of across the spectrum, right? All the way from telcos, operators, service providers, you know, any, anyone who's kind of touching the device or or has a stake in the device is finding value in kind of what you have to offer is fair to say correct um that, that that's correct so we our customers traditionally are mainly mainly the or our immediate customers are mainly the device manufacturers the one that are actually manufacturing the devices uh okay. but our users are not our users are their customers so um if you're uh, if you're looking at the um screens like we have right here um, we have the manufacturers that are embedding our solution inside, but they're delivering that as a service, uh, either to telcos that uh, deliver that or service providers or operator system integrators, uh, or even uh, um, solution providers that uh, take these screens and, and turn them into a uh, interactive kiosk. Uh, but yep. they are all using our platform the entire life cycle of the device. Uh, anything okay. from 
over the air firmware updates all the way to remote screen assistance and uh, mm -hmm. alerting on misuse or uh, application management. So gotcha. the entire uh, life cycle of the device is being uh, taken care of for all stakeholders mm -hmm. at, at every stage. Fantastic. And now I, would, I wanted to kind of ask you just a general question about from kind of the founding of the company until now, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you as a founder, co-founder and, and CEO of a company have kind of come across through getting your company off the ground to where it is today? Um, I, and I'd love to just kind of have you touch on anything, even if it's high, broad level type stuff, just to get a sense of, um, you know, sharing some of those learnings and potential advice for people listening. Yeah, so it's it's a company and it's bootstrap yeah. company. A company that means okay. that there there are challenges uh, from you know end to end, anything from day to day management all the way to uh, um, getting uh, in front of uh, the A level uh, device manufacturers. So it's not very typical that a company of our size and um, and and our scale um, yep. is working with the biggest names in the market um, yep. and our solution is trusted to be inside their firmware from the from the factory so sure. uh, it, it was um, at first it was pretty difficult to, uh, um, to to get that first and second and third manufacturer to trust us but mm -hmm. then you know after after uh, after a year or two uh, then we we became sort of like a standard uh, for the market. We, the, the name Radix stands for device management for many, many verticals. Uh, so okay. it's, uh, um, and we, another thing that um, kind of um, uh, held us back is that we do a lot of white label. Um, since mm. we're working with the manufacturers, the manufacturers deliver our solution, but under their name. Um, and in order to uh, build a brand or, or get the awareness, it took a lot of time. Uh, sure from starting as a, a full white label to a powered by Radix and to a full Radix right. solution, which became right. a, a known brand. So yeah, yeah it, it, in all of that, um, with, uh, you know, a completely bootstrapped, uh, I think that, uh, um, it, there were a lot of challenges, but, uh, we're, we're in a great position at the moment. Fantastic. And, and one of the last questions I want to ask you is, when you were, um, and it's probably been a, a challenge throughout the entire um, growth of the company, is the educational component and educating the market, showing value through whether it's content, whether it's your marketing campaigns, whether it's just your general discussions. How did you kind of deal with that educational component and making sure people understood the value of what you were bringing to the market and the general just sense of, of why the, the offering is so important and needs to be something that they you know strongly are considering. Yes, this is um, this is a combination of a lot of things that a lot of things that happened. Some of them uh, okay. were driven uh, by us with a lot of hard work. Um, also, okay. Nadav, our uh, Nadav Avni, our CMO, had a lot of a lot to do with it. Um, sure. But uh, I think the main factor was. Uh, to, to educate a market that does not know um, that device management is a crucial part of what they're going to, of what they need is one thing um, to come in uh, to a saturated market with uh, a lot of MDM players that are, uh, are preaching the fact that they're the right tool for the job, okay. which they're not. It's another thing. Um, sure. But after, but after um, you kind of land one or two main players in, in, in a vertical, um, mm -hmm. they start looking to the right and to the left and see what, uh, what the market is using. And I think it becomes easier. So today, okay. um, the biggest challenge for us was in the Android TV, uh, sphere because, um, we did not come into a void. I mean, uh, the telcos used to manage their, um, routers and, and set the boxes for, for ages, but they were using obsolete solutions and, uh, solutions based on a, uh, a protocol called tier 69 doesn't really matter, but the, it's, it's a very, okay. very different use case. It's static. Okay. It doesn't uh, change too often. And, right. and when they um, started delivering Android TV, which is completely the opposite, it's a, it's yeah. um, a very flexible um, uh, operating system, uh, which is promoted by Google as um, 
and full control of the user, they were still in that mindset of we're we're not managing uh, sta uh, you know uh, these flexible devices. We're still managing that static old mm -hmm. set of boxes, and this is where it we had to um, wait for the market to feel the the heat uh, and understand that this is a typical support call or the challenges are you know are a bit uh, harder than what they're used to and then come right. in full strength and we're being recommended by google to uh to telcos and and we are actually uh um working with uh, uh set a box manufacturers to uh, uh come in together uh to telecom companies it's a challenge uh the 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 fact that they don't know yet uh, mm. when they start enroll that they start the initiatives for Android TV, they don't know yet that they will need such a solution is a bit right. difficult. Right. But time, makes time helps us. Sorry, go ahead. I said time helps us. I mean, one or two companies oh. that are uh, telcos that are already um, in, in the market with, uh, with their stitched solution from, from different, uh, you know, different components, they understand right. that they don't have the right solution. And, um, and we're in. Absolutely. Uh, one of the last questions I kind of wanted to ask you here is, is tying into a lot of what we've already talked about. If, if anybody out there is listening to and wants to get a better sense of how to get started down the device management kind of path, um, what's the best way to kind of go about doing that? What advice do you have for them to things they should be thinking about, how to get started, that kind of thing? Um, not sure that I understood exactly who, who, are, who is the question referring to? I mean, uh, um, so, so let's say device manufacturers out there looking to better understand oh, how to manage their devices. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think as a rule of thumb, any device that runs Android, um, we can manage it. Any device okay. that runs windows, we can manage it. Any device that, uh, runs, uh, Linux, we can manage it. Okay. But, um, if we, if we're drilling down deeper into the capabilities and, and the requirements, I think that mm -hmm. the devices that. A man, if, a, if a manufacturer uh, comes out with a device that has a screen, um, you know anything that has a screen, um, then then they will find us as the um, as the, the best partner that, uh, mm. that that's out there for for their solutions. It doesn't matter what the use case, it doesn't matter what the okay. end use case is. Any device, um, even a, a a charging station for for um, electric vehicles. It's a standalone solution standing outside your network. Uh, it need, it has a computing power, a screen, and and, and we'll be right. able to uh, manage it remotely. Fantastic. And what's the best way for people to kind of learn more about what you all do and, and the so offerings you can you uh, visit our website, um, get some more information. But the best way um, is to uh, to contact us and and you know kind of tell us what your dream use case is, and and we'll help mm -hmm. you. But the the Website is uh, www.radix-int.com, and that's uh, that's where you'll find most of the information that you, you're looking for. Fantastic. Well, we'll make sure we link that up in, in all the content and description that we put out there. Uh, Michael, it's been a, it's a fantastic been a fantastic conversation today. Thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed learning more about kind of how you all are approaching device management, um, the offerings that you guys have in the market, and kind of you know the the big role that you're playing in helping this uh, you know become something that is more of an industry standard than it than it was before. So so thank you so much for taking your time today. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.